so pleased that you can all be here tonight to celebrate this special liturgy. Each family has received a candle for their loved one. Please select one family representative to bring your candle up in procession. You'll notice that on the back of your candle is a colored dot. The candles are divided into three color groups, red, green, and orange. The colored sticker on your candle corresponds to a colored marker on the sides or back of the church. During the liturgy tonight, following the homily, Monsignor McCormack will invite the selected representative from each family to bring their candle up in procession. At that time, those with a red sticker on their candle are asked to walk directly to the back vestibule of the church. Behind the glass doors, you're actually going to go in the vestibule. Those with a green sticker on their candle are asked to immediately line up in single file against the side confessional wall inside of the church on this side here. Those with an orange sticker are asked to line up in single file along the confessional wall on that side of the church under the orange stickers, under the green stickers. You do not need to be in alphabetical order. At the appropriate time, each group will be led to the back vestibule to join the procession. So we'll start with the right group. When it's time and they're almost done, we'll bring the green group back. When they're almost done, we'll bring the orange group back. So just stand. You're in the church on either side. You can participate by being there for the other people as they bring their candles up in procession. Um, we just ask everyone to be mindful to maintain a quiet reverence throughout the entire liturgy. So there'll be someone in each area to give you direction. After Mass, the candles will be returned to you. Please remain in, your, in the pews and the names of the candles will be called, and then you can come up and retrieve them. Okay. So I thank you for your attention. Thank you for being here, and make a lot of questions. Good evening and welcome. Tonight we are celebrating our annual Memorial Mass as we prepare ourselves for the beginning of our liturgy. Let us take a moment to remember that autumn is a time for gathering in, a season of harvest. It is a reminder of God's providential care for each of us. As we praise and thank God for the abundant fruit of the earth, 
we also celebrate the rich harvest of goodness showered by God on those who have gone before us in faith. In this liturgy, we pray that Christ, who renews us each day in the Eucharist, will fill with peace and hope all those who continue to mourn the loss of a loved one. Our entrance in is Christ Be Our Light, found on page three of the Memorial Mass booklet. Please stand. Special welcome to all those who are joining us from their home tonight. On behalf of the parish community, I thank all of you for accepting our invitation to come here tonight to remember your loved ones. As I was preparing for tonight, I went back in mind, my mind, remembering so many of you, especially during the time of the illness of your loved one, Certainly when you gathered here uh, to celebrate the funeral mass, and I know there are many other of our parishioners who had the funeral celebrations in their loved one's uh, personal parishes, but you're all here tonight. And as I was creating the list for the invitations, as I signed all the letters, as we prepared the candles, so many memories ran through my mind and I was looking forward to seeing all of you here tonight. As I've said for so many years now, if it were up to me, I would like to spend the evening celebrating Mass for your families individually. But with so many people here tonight, it is a bit overwhelming. But I want you to know that you have been in my thoughts and prayers and I know Audrey Wilson, who's over here to my right, I know she has ministered to many of you as well. And for our own parishioners, 
Um, we continue to pray for all of you. And so let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, life of all that is mortal and the joy of the saints, we humbly pray to you for our brothers and sisters that freed from the bonds of mortality, they may possess your kingdom in everlasting glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. My soul is deprived of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. I tell myself my future is lost, all that I hoped for from the Lord. The thought of my homeless poverty is wormwood and gall. Remembering it over and over leaves my soul downcast within me. But I will call this to mind as my reason to have hope. The favors of the Lord are not exhausted. His mercies are not spent. They are renewed each morning. So great is his faithfulness. My portion is the Lord, says my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. Good is the Lord to one who waits for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good to hope in silence for the saving help of the Lord. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? 
No, in all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor heights, nor death, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Once again, we are very, very pleased and grateful that you are all here tonight. Our gathering here, our presence, is an expression of our enduring love for all those who have gone before us, our deceased brothers and sisters. Our presence here tonight is an expression of our need for God's healing as we yearn to be with those we love and very much miss. Our presence here is a reminder that we're not alone. Very often when I invite people personally throughout the year, 
that we're going to have the memorial mass. I tell them, and I've told you, many of you, that our gathering is not another funeral mass, but rather it's an opportunity to come together and for some families, the first time that they are together since the death, the funeral of their loved one. And I often say that when we come to a mass such as this, so often we think we're the only ones grieving. No one understands. And yet when we come for the annual memorial mass, we look around and we see so many people who are also grieving. Last year at this time, all those we're honoring tonight were alive. Tonight they're with the Lord. But so often we think we're alone. And no one remembers. Maybe very few care. I'm reminded of a situation many, many years ago when I was part of a pre-Cana group parishioners who were preparing, preparing couples for marriage. And there were a number of young people who were sharing their experiences. And one couple in particular was sharing how important it is to be in tune with the feelings of their spouse. And the wife on this particular afternoon shared her own personal story she explained that her husband, who was sitting right next to her, his father had died, and he was very, very close to his dad. And she was feeling his pain of separation. The day of the funeral, after the mass, as they were making their way to the cemetery, she sat next to him. And she was looking out the window of the car, and she saw people just going about doing ordinary things, children walking to school, men on the road doing roadside work, people just driving, people walking. And she said, I felt like screaming, don't you know that Mark's father has died? She went on to say that she realized that was kind of unreasonable. Everybody had their own things they were dealing with. But she was feeling the pain so severely what her husband was going through that she felt very alone for him and for her. Sometimes we feel that way. Especially when life moves on so quickly and we're sitting in our home across from a chair that's empty. And that's why the first reading tonight might be somewhat helpful. God's word from the book of Lamentation. Lamentation simply means cries from the heart. And I think the first part of this passage speaks to many of us, especially at the time of someone's death, most especially if it's a sudden death. But even for those who are anticipating the death of their loved one, even praying that God be merciful, as I say so often, no matter how prepared you think you are, you're not, because it's so final. And therefore these words can very much be our own. My soul is deprived of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. I tell myself my future is lost. All that I hope for from the Lord. Remembering it over and over leaves my soul downcast within me. And we can vacillate, we can move on, but then we fall back. And these words become very real very expressive. And it may not be tonight or tomorrow 
or even in the next few months. But eventually, most people will come to the point of knowing that their loved one is not coming back, no matter how much we want them to walk through the front door, we come to terms with the fact that they're gone. And then we say, but I will call this to mind as my reason to have hope. The favors of the Lord are not exhausted. His mercies are not spent. They are renewed each morning. So great is his faithfulness. And so we might ask, how do we go from the first part to the second part? We do it through taking to heart the words of tonight's gospel from John. Because it is here that Jesus reveals the will of the Father. And the will of the Father is that we all have eternal life. We pray that our brothers and sisters, parents, children, have moved on to eternal life. This is the will of the one who sent me, that I not should lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. If we can take those words to heart, and apply them to those that were missing, then we will be able to move beyond where we are tonight. And if we cannot, have not done it before tonight, certainly tonight, we might be able to do this. To believe that our God loves us. And there is a spiritual communion between ourselves, all of us, and those who have gone before us. Very often when I'm in the presence of someone who is dying, and I know them well, such as a family member, but many of our parishioners as well, I say to myself, if I could only hear their voice, one more time, if they would only open their eyes one more time, if I knew what they were thinking right now. Well, one of the great saints, St. John, in his, one of his homilies, wrote these beautiful words. For I always say, Lord, your will be done, not what this person or that person would have me do, but Jesus, what you would want me to do. That is my strong tower, immovable rock, my staff that never gives way. If God wants something, let it be done. If he wants me to stay here, I am grateful. But whatever he wants me to do, I am no less grateful. Yet, where I am, you are there too. And where you are, I am. We are a single body. And the body cannot be separated from the head, nor the head from the body. Distance separates us but love unites us, and death itself cannot divide us. For though my body die, my soul will live and will always be mindful of my people. 
St. Paul, in that second reading that we just heard, expresses some of those same thoughts. Nothing will separate us from the love of God, and nothing will separate us from the love of those who have gone before us. There is a spiritual communion. There's a book written, many of our parishioners have it and use it, called Healing After Loss, Daily Meditations of Working Through Grief by Martha Whitmore Hickman. In one of her daily reflections, she said, is it not true that when we have not seen a particular friend for many, many years, and then we meet them again, and we spend some time, do we not say to ourselves, even though years have gone by, it's like I saw them yesterday. The conversation is so easy, the memories are so beautiful. Like all that time never existed like I saw them yesterday. And Martha Hickman went on to say, if that is true with those we know and love and can be physically in their presence, is it not true that we can do the same with those who've gone before us? We knew them so well, we loved them so dearly, we know what they would be saying to us today how they would want to comfort us and let us know that all is well. And they certainly would not want us to continue to grieve as one without hope. What she was speaking of there is the communion of saints, that we as Catholics and others believe in. All of us, all those who have gone before us, and every time we come to Mass, every time we celebrate the Eucharist, we are entering into the divine liturgy. Sometimes we think it's just us here, but it's all those who have gone before us, those in purgatory, those with the Lord in heaven. But we're all together, every Mass. And I firmly believe, and I speak from my own experience, I am very close and couldn't be closer to my own parents, my siblings, cousins, grandparents, because they're all here with us now. And as many of our parishioners would know, that what comes to mind for me personally is something that my sister Helen, who was religious, Her ministry was in Harrisburg for 40 some years. But she would say to me and write to me, I will meet you in the Eucharist. And those words were very comforting, but even more comforting today because she is numbered among those who have gone before us. And every time I celebrate the Mass, I remember those words, and I meet her and all those who have gone before us. Now all that takes faith. Faith is a gift. We don't earn it, it's a gift. And pray God that we have that gift, and we nourish it by remaining part of a community whether it's here, Francis Cabrini, your own particular parish community or whatever denomination any of us might be, that we remain part of a community, supporting one another, expressing our faith, and knowing that someday, someday, we will be with our loved ones forever.
Please remain seated. This time I'm going to uh, give a, another instruction with regard to the presentation of the memorial candles. So if no one could move at this point, but eventually those with the candles that have the red dot, you're going to make your way to the back of the church behind the glass doors in the center aisle. Those with the green dot, we're going to ask those to move over here to my left and line up against that wall, but face the sanctuary. And those with the orange uh, dots to go to my right, but again against the wall, but face forward so you're still participating in watching. And then someone will come and bring those two groups, the green and the orange, through the side doors and make your way into the center aisle and come up. And what we're going to ask you to do, um, when you present your candle to me, I'm going to light your candle, the memorial candle, from the Paschal candle, which is uh, a symbol of the victory of Jesus, his victory over death. And so that candle will be used to light your candle. And then you would just bring it forward. We're going to ask as you present the candle uh, to me for the lighting, if you could turn the label with the name uh, toward the deacon because he's going to call the name and then you'll walk forward and handle, hand the candle to those in the sanctuary and after mass they, you can uh, retrieve them. And when you do take them home, uh, to relight them, special moments in time, the date of birth, date of entrance into eternal life, wedding anniversary, some special days, you're welcome to do that. I visited a number of our people in the parish over the years. Some have five, six, and seven of these candles already. And I know they're very, very uh, significant in the lives of many people. And again, we're very, very happy that you're here. So if you could make your way, those with the green to the left, those with the red to center and go straight out, and the orange on this side against the wall. Thank you.
Warner Carmen. Dennis Eisenberg. Jeanette Bray. Jeanette Boschman. Joseph Fay. Bill Chapman, Jr. Richard Enos. Thomas Barnelli. Bonnie Fisher. Fred Marino. Kenneth Murders Jr. Francis McCormick. Jameson. Margaret Jameson.
Francis Gallagher. Robert Marathi. Donald Merrick. Richard Lanza. Michael Moan. Sarah Keys. Patrick Kohler. Jack Miller. George Kramer. Eileen Lyman. Father Donald Miniscalco. Dennis McFadden. Roman Niz. Robert Hart. Tom 
Miss McManus. Baby Adler Edison Lines. Patrick Stanton. <laughs> Diane Sokolowski. Joseph Wilson. Cecilia Cubero Ortiz. Edward Percorni Jr. Senior. Jose Falegas. Dorothy Steffes. Mimi Sable. Magnolia Senior. Nancy Raybuck. Greg Scarborough. Maria Percaccia. Mm -hmm. 
Dan Skaleski. Thank you. Craig Steele. Helen Phillips. Diane Weiser. Karen Romary. Marina Roder. Gina Marie Sanner Maholland. Pastor Carl Van Dyne. Madeline Pat. Richard Russo. Please stand. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters, let us offer our prayers and petition to God on behalf of ourselves and indeed all people. For the men and women who give their lives in service to the church, that they may remain strong in their dedication to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they may, may grow ever more aware of the value of human life and seek to protect it at all times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are experiencing sorrow at the loss of a loved one, may the promise of eternal life bring them hope comfort, and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, that they may be blessed with caring friends and caregivers to support and console them in their time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in the medical field, may they be a healing presence in the lives of those whom they are serving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are being especially remembered tonight, and all those who have died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, hear our prayers, and continue to pour out your grace on us, so that we may serve you faithfully, and in serving you, that we may find your peace and consolation in our lives. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Our offertory hymn is Saints and Beloved of God, found on page five of the Memorial Mass booklet. my brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice 
Receive, O Lord, in your kindness the sacrificial offering we make for our departed brothers and sisters and for all who sleep in Christ that set free from the bonds of death by this singular sacrifice they may merit eternal life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as we acclaim. Please kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Please kneel or be seated. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn will be Behold the Lamb, found on page 8 of the Memorial Mass booklet, Behold the Lamb. Page 8 of the Memorial Mass booklet, Behold the Lamb.
Please stand. Let us pray. As we participate in the divine mysteries, we pray, Almighty God, that they may advance our salvation and bring pardon to the souls of your servants for whom we implore your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's so good for all of us to be together tonight. As I mentioned the homily, these candles that represent our loved ones, one year ago tonight, they were all within our families. Never know when the Lord is going to call us home. And therefore, it's so very, very important that we be in the right relationship with the Lord, with our true self, and with community. Again, I thank you for coming. And the conclusion of the liturgy, if you just wait for uh, some of our parishioners to come up and assist you, if you would stay outside the sanctuary and they will retrieve your candle. And I said earlier, please take the candle home, relight it as often as you like, but especially date of birth, date of entrance into eternal life, and anniversary date, something that is significant to you and to your loved one. Everyone is invited, whether you responded or not, you're all invited to Monsignor Woods Hall for some refreshments. It's the gym, it's the fancy name for it, Monsignor Woods, but it's the gym. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is Sing with All the Saints in Glory, found on page 9 of the Memorial Mass book.
Will Rosario. <laughs>